In one of the previous videos, we had discussed about correlation in statistics. We use correlation often during exploratory data analysis or EDA. But do you know that there are caveats in the way we run correlation? So stay tuned, we will be dealing with it in a moment. Welcome to another video from Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. I am Shreesh and on this channel I bring you tips and tutorials to help you grow faster in a professional and personal life. So if you are new here, subscribe to the channel and do not forget to click the notification bell. To begin with, hope we are all familiar with the IRIS dataset. For those who aren't aware, it is a dataset of petal length and width along with corresponding sepal length and width for various flowers belonging to three different families in the taxonomy of flowers. And this is how the data looks like. For the uninitiated in this following image, this is a petal and this is a sepal. Using iris data, we have run correlation on petal and sepal length and width using R and created the following charts. The first chart displays the scatter plot for sepal length versus sepal width. Though low, it exhibits a negative correlation of negative 0.1175. The second chart displays the scatter plot for petal length versus sepal width. Again, it exhibits a negative correlation of negative 0.4284. And the third plot displays the scatter plot for petal width versus sepal width. This too exhibits a negative correlation of negative 0.3661. We observe that all three charts are negatively correlated. That is, when one variable increases, the other variable decreases. Interestingly, when the same scatter plots were plotted separately by each family, we observed that amongst the same set of variables, we have a positive correlation indicated by the colored lines. The black line represents the trend line when the data was analyzed earlier at the overall level. Now, this is a very interesting reversal of the trend or the correlation when the data was analyzed separately by splitting using another variable. It appears as if this new variable was hiding or lurking. Hence, we need to be very careful of such lurking variables which are also called as confounding variables. Confounding since they can cause a surprising reversal of the originally observed trend. Unlike what the image suggests, these variables are not unwanted. In fact, these should be sought after to visualize the correct picture in your data. Now you'll see that the scatter plots that are run at the flower family level are incidentally accurate. There indeed is a positive correlation between the various charts. This peculiar effect that we've observed is called the Simpson's paradox. It is also known as the Yule Simpson effect or the reversal effect. Where there's an important disclaimer over here. The effect, however, bears no relation to the popular TV series or the character. Any resemblance is unintentional and coincidental. Simpson's paradox is defined as a trend or result that is present when the data is put into groups that reverses or disappears when the data is combined. Edward H. Simpson described this effect in a technical paper written in 1951. But statisticians Carl Pearson in 1899 and Whitney Yule in 1903 had mentioned similar effects earlier. The name Simpson's Paradox was introduced by Colin R. Blith in 1972. Now that we know what Simpson's Paradox is, let's see how we can avoid it and effectively learn what we need to do when we run correlation. We do this in three stages. But before we continue any further, like this video and share it with your friends and acquaintances. And yes, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Going further, the first and the foremost most important thing to do when running correlation is to use dimensionality judiciously. This means that we should avoid broad categories and variables. As much as possible, we should run the exploratory data analysis at various levels to observe such effects. The next thing is to be on the lookout for interpretations that seem logically and intuitively unlikely. Domain knowledge comes pretty handy at this stage. And finally, the third and the most important thing that you need to do is when you come to stage two, you should go back to stage one. That way it will save you a lot of heartache later on. Okay, to move on, Simpson's paradox is observed not just in correlation, but also in cross tabulation tables. So let's see with this following illustration, how this particular effect is seen and tackled. In IPL, the Indian Premier League, which is considered as the Super Bowl of India, batting averages of two batsmen were compared 
for player auctions before the next season commenced. A certain batsman too was found to be a favourite based on his batting average that was slightly better than batsman 1. Incidentally, he would have had fetched a higher auction price. However, on a closer examination of their batting performances, it was in fact batsman 1 who was relatively a better performer. It was simple coincidence that batsman 2 had played more matches with a relatively weaker team and managed to score more. This insight would not have been possible if the data was not analyzed at the match team level scores. In absence of this analysis, batsman 1 would have had lost his chance despite a good show of performance. These illustrations amply demonstrate the devastating effect that an improper and hastily performed data analysis can have on the outcome. It is therefore a wise decision to patiently spend ample time on exploratory data analysis with the knowledge of effects such as Simpson's paradox can have on the interpretations. I hope this video was informative and you enjoyed watching it. So do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Please like and share the video so that many more of your friends and acquaintances can benefit from this knowledge. Till we meet again, stay healthy and stay peaceful.